plan his purpose is. These are questions that men have asked themselves uh, since probably Adam and Eve in the garden, you know, understanding and becoming friendly, understanding with God, friendly with God, walking with God, talking with God, understanding God. The Bible says his ways are above our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. So we, we can't understand God from that, from that equal footing, but we can begin to understand the plan of God, the will of God, through our relationship with him. He begins to reveal it unto us. Amen. And our experiences and the times that he comes on our behalf and he makes a way for us and he encourages, he increases us, he lifts us up, he blesses us, he uh, uh, helps us through the, uh, the storms, the troubles of life and the blessings, the favor. All these things are working together to, uh, to help us to understand and to know God. But I want to preach to you, if the Lord will help me for a few minutes of time today, the God that I know. Amen. Amen. I want to preach to you about the God that I know. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, in this service this morning, I, I'm convinced that a majority of the, the church world as we know it today are struggling to know God because of the lack of ministry that's going out that actually teaches the God of the Bible. Amen. The God of the Bible is a, a, a father. Yes. He's creator. He's first and last. He's the beginning and the end. Amen. There is no start. There is no finish. Uh, there's none higher. Amen. Uh, there's many adjectives that we could lay upon this this morning, but God, the God that I know yes. this morning, I want to encourage you and help you this morning, if the Lord will help us uh, for a few minutes of time this morning to just delve into a subject or a topic uh, that is exhaustible. You, you can't preach enough about uh, uh, what I'm fixing to get into today. I cannot get through it uh, in the time frame that I have, and, and if I preached it every Sunday... And every Wednesday from here to the Lord takes me home, I can never exhaust the God that I know. Amen. 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 So let's look at Isaiah chapter 41. Amen. Now we mentioned a little bit earlier about Isaiah chapter 40 and verse uh, 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 29, 30, and 31 leading up. Uh, talking about he giveth power to the faint and he giveth uh, uh, might to them and, to, and he increases the strength. Uh, uh, for we know that the youth shall fail and the strong shall be weak. And, and what this entails to us is the, is the necessity, the need, amen, to know God, to understand God in the realm of he's God and I'm his child. He's father and I'm his child. Uh, I'm the servant, amen. Uh, uh, but understanding this, that God does not lord over me uh, with a heavy hand, but his desire is to lift me up and to encourage me and to help me uh, to be a blessing, to bring favor, to bring joy, to bring happiness. Uh, uh, my relationship with him through his son, Jesus Christ, uh, amen. There is no uh, 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 relationship with the Father except we come through the Son, amen. Uh, and then that relationship is enveloped through the Holy Ghost, uh, amen, the God in us, amen, the Spirit of the living God. And, and it comes into our hearts and it leads us, it guides us uh, into righteousness, into truth, amen. Uh, it teaches us. Uh, it is a desire, amen, for fellowship. Uh, it's a desire for relationship. Uh, and when we hunger and when we thirst after him, uh, the God that I know, amen, uh, is a God, amen, or the God uh, that blesses and favors and encourages and increases and strengthens, uh, amen. He's the God that takes me through the deep waters, uh, but he also promised me that he would not let the waters overflow. Uh, he would not let the waters overtake me. Uh, the God that I know, amen, he takes me through the fire, uh, amen. He doesn't lead me away from it. But he says, son, the fire is not going to hurt you. Uh, amen. If I be for you, who can be against you? Uh, amen. I'm not afraid of the fire. Uh, I'm not afraid of the water. Uh, I'm not afraid of the trouble, Brother Robbie. Uh, I didn't come here this morning saying, God, uh, move that mountain. Uh, but I came here saying, God, uh, give me strength to climb that mountain. Uh, Lord, I know uh, that you're with me. Uh, I know, uh, amen, that you favor and you bless. Uh, amen. And while I'm in struggle, uh, while I'm in need, uh, while I feel the weight of the world on my shoulders. Uh, amen. It encourages me. Uh, amen. To hit my knees and to seek your face uh, and say, God, I know you haven't left me. Uh, I know you haven't forsaken me. Uh, I 
understand the pressure that I feel, but I feel the hand of God as you begin to come in and lift that burden, as you begin to back away, amen, the lines, as you begin to close the mouths of those that would devour us and seek after us, as you, amen, turn the swords and the weapons formed against us, you begin to take them away, you begin to turn them into nothing, hallelujah, the word here is going to encourage us, it's going to straighten us, it's going to bring us to a place where we can have full faith and assurance and confidence uh, in the God that I know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Isaiah 41 and 10. It says, fear thou not. Amen. Fear thou not. What he's saying is you do not fear. Amen. Amen. Do not fear. Amen. Fear is absence of the wisdom and knowledge of God. Amen. When we have Sister Barbara, the wisdom, the knowledge of God, when we have relationship with Him, when we know Him, amen, uh, there is no fear. The Bible says that perfect love casteth out fear. Amen. John said God is love. Amen. And when the love of God is in my heart, I have no reason to fear whatever may be in front of me, on the side of me, or behind me. Amen. God is with me. God is here. God is in you and I. If we come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ, He is here. He is in you. And He is able, amen, to give you strength, amen, whatever you face. Fear not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed. Amen. For I am thy. God. I am your God is what he's saying. I am your God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. Yes, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Amen. Behold all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing, and they that strive with thee shall perish. Come on, church. They sh uh, he says, you shall seek them and shall not find them. Yes. Those who were against you, uh, those who were opposed to you, uh, those, amen, who come against you, your marriage, uh, your children, uh, your home, uh, your business, uh, amen, when they rose up against you, uh, God said, I'm the one that came down. Uh, I'm the one that put a hedge of protection around you. Uh, oh, you may have felt fire. You may have felt the heat. Uh, you may have felt, amen, uh, the opposition. Uh, he says, but it did not overtake you. Uh, it could not bring you down. Uh, it could not destroy you. Uh, he said, because I have been with you. Uh, I am your God. Uh, I am the one that lifts you up. Uh, I am the one that strengthens you. Uh, I one, amen, that causes your enemy to flee. I'm the one, amen, that speaks the word over you. Amen. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. I'm the one, amen, that come down. I'm the one that lit among men. I'm the one, amen, that bled and died. My son, Jesus Christ, whom I gave in the foundation of the world. Amen. To go forth and to make a way for you. He says he will deliver you. Yes. Yes, he will. Hallelujah. Amen. You might as well just let go and have church. Amen. Just let go and have church this morning. Amen. God wants to encourage you this morning. Amen. You can leave here lifted up and blessed this morning. Hallelujah. It's your choice this morning. Hallelujah. The God that I know, he says, fear not, I'm with thee. I love that. Behold, all they that were incensed against you, all of those that were mad, amen, they shall be ashamed and confounded. In verse 12, he says, you shall seek them and you won't be able to find them. Hey, amen. God is going to take care of it. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. He says, I will take care of it. Hey, amen. Even them that contended with thee. He said, they that war against thee shall be as nothing. Amen. In other words, he's going to weaken them, Sister Barbara. Amen. To what they have, amen, cannot withstand against what you have. Amen. When two people go up in war, he said in the king, uh, uh, talking Jesus did, uh, he said, what king goes up to war uh, that he doesn't take counsel before he goes uh, to make sure, amen, uh, that he has what he needs uh, to fight against what's coming. Uh, amen. I'm going to tell you something this morning. Uh, if you know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, uh, amen, you have of everything that you need. Amen. When that enemy comes and he begins to knock at your door and he says, your child is being taken off. Your husband is fixing to die. Amen. This is fixing to happen or that's fixing to happen. Amen. Let the strength of God overshadow you. Let the test of God, amen, say, I'll enter this test. I'll face this storm. I'll walk according 
to the will of God. I'll not be turned back. I'll not give in. Why? Because devil, he's with me. Amen. Amen. Greater is he that's with me. Greater is he that's in me. Hallelujah. The God that I know, amen, shall protect me. Amen. The God that I know, amen, shall strengthen me. The God that I know, the God that I'm in fellowship with, the God that I'm in relationship with, the God that I become in covenant with through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, amen. He says, there is no other gods before, beside me. Uh, there is no other gods, amen, uh, that can deliver you. Uh, he said, though men take trees uh, and cut them down uh, and shape them, mold them, uh, hewn them down, uh, make something out of them. Uh, he said, let me tell you something about those uh, that would fall down and worship them. Uh, he says, they don't have to see. Uh, they don't have ears to hear. Uh, they have no voice to speak with. Uh, there's no power in them. Uh, same man can take that same image uh, and he can throw it in the fire uh, and watch it burn. Uh, he says, but I am the Lord thy God. Uh, he said, and by my right hand, uh, I will uphold you according to my righteousness. Uh, he said, if you'll trust in me, uh, he said, I'll take you through the flood. Uh, if you'll trust in me, uh, I'll take you through the fire. Uh, if you'll hold on to me, uh, he said, I will keep you in midst of what's going on. Amen. The God that I know is able. He's able. Amen. So we talked Wednesday night. The lesson was the God, God's plan of provision. Hey, man, that's the one we dealt with mostly, or that's the one we did end up going to. And what we began to talk about a little bit, and it kind of spurred this into this week, is God's plan never fails. Amen. His plan from the beginning of time, which there is no beginning of God, but from whatever we can conceive as the beginning of time. Maybe you look at it, I look at it as the time that He formed this world. Hey, Amen. But let's just be honest God has no beginning, He has no end. Amen. Amen. What happened before this world was formed? Let that sink in and contemplate on that for a while. Amen. But let me just go back to this. God's plan is sufficient. Amen. God's plan uh, is everything that we have need of. Yeah. Sister Nancy, we as the children of God, we must, amen, hold to God. Amen. We must say, you are Father. Amen. You are Lord. You are God. Amen. You are, amen, uh, my provider. You are, amen, amen my strength. Uh, you are my sword, my shield. Uh, amen. I can't get nothing outside of you. Uh, amen. I can't form it. I can't make it. Uh, I can't yeah. work hard enough. Uh, the bank ain't got enough money. Uh, amen. They ain't enough doctors in the world. Uh, but if I go to you, uh, you have a heaven stored up uh, with riches that are untold. Uh, you can bring it to my hand uh, if I need it. Uh, you are the great physician. Uh, if I need help, uh, if I I need healing. I get it from you. God, amen, his plan from the beginning of the foundation of the world, amen, to everlasting and everlasting. It is sufficient. It is enough. Amen. And if I sow into that, Sister Faith, I've got to come to the place where I get on my knees and I say, God, you are everything that I need. I have nothing outside. I have nothing over here that I can go to, but I'm going to serve you. I'm going to walk according to your will. I'm going to submit myself unto you to do what you'd have me to do. We got to get to that place. That's the God that I know. That's the God that answers. He's the one that we come into that covenant relationship with. Amen. Israel. Amen. At the, uh, at the time of Abraham's obedience unto God. Amen. When he called him up out of the earth of the Chaldees. And he told him to go to a land that he would show him. Amen. And bring him into that land. And he began to make him a promise. Amen. That where he put a sole of his feet. Amen. Where he looked out, he'd give him for a possession. Amen. He who had no children. Amen. What, uh, what good is it going to do to me to inherit this land? I have this land. Uh, I can't pass it on to anybody. Uh, but nevertheless, God give him this instruction. Uh, and he takes what he has, Sister Gail, uh, and he leaves the comfort uh, and the security of his natural home. Uh, amen. Trusting in a voice that he's heard. Uh, something has, re amen, resonated uh, from yonder heaven. Uh, above, amen, what we can see uh, into the other world, uh, amen, the world of the spirits, uh, and even above that to where the throne of God is, uh, amen, and he spoke from heaven, uh, and he said, Abraham, uh, hey, get thee up and get thee out, amen. amen, he heard that voice, and he responded to it, and he moved out, 
Look along the lane of time. The children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in a covenant relationship with the God. Amen. The I am that I am. And God said, there's many times you've disappointed me. And there's times that you've blessed me. But through it all, he said, I've established a covenant with you. Amen. And when you're up, amen, he says, when you're serving me and worshiping me, he said, I've raised you up. When you've disappointed me, when you've backed away from me, when you've backslid as a backsliding heifer, when you've turned away from me, you've quit uh, uh, bringing the sacrifice, you quit honoring me and worshiping me. Uh, he said, I've allowed, amen, the enemy to overtake you. Uh, I've allowed things to happen in your life. Uh, so I'm coming to a place here where I'm going to tell you the God that I know, uh, hey, amen, is a God that will bless you, uh, hey, amen, if you serve him and honor him. Uh, but he's the same God, amen, uh, that will allow you to feel the heat and the flames. Uh, hey, amen, he'll allow the enemy to overtake you. Uh, hey, amen, if you don't look to him and honor him and serve him, uh, the God that I know is a very much a God of provision and blessing and favor. Uh, but He's also the same God uh, that says if you want to walk contrary to my will, uh, if you want to come to church on Sunday uh, and then on Monday deny me uh, and not serve me and walk according to my word uh, and you want to do your own thing, uh, he says I will let you do your own thing uh, and the enemy will come and he'll have his way with you. Uh, but praise be unto God uh, for grace and mercy in truth. Uh, amen. When he said uh, if you humble yourself before me uh, if you come and honor me with your lips uh, and from your heart bless me and praise me uh, with a broken heart and a contrite spirit uh, and you ask forgiveness. Uh, hallelujah. Though you've been contrary. He said I'll bring you back in again. Uh, amen. But I'm going to encourage us this morning. Uh, amen. Let us know the God that we serve this morning. Uh, that if we walk contrary to his will yeah. you will feel right. amen the, the, the enemy press in. Hallelujah. We have a choice. Ain't Judy? We have a choice every day. I'm going to serve God. Or today I'm going to serve Chris. You know, to, to, to Sunday I'll serve God, but the rest of the time I want to serve Chris. You know, I, I want Chris to have a little fun. I want Chris to do a little this, that, and the other. Hey, man, and you can come in on Sunday and you can... Amen, hear the songs, and you can, amen, hear the message, and you can walk out just like you come in. Amen. Because what's happening on Monday through Saturday is you're building back a wall. Amen, to where the Spirit of God, amen, is having to try to fight through that. Uh, amen, and what happens is, is we get cold and indifferent. Uh, that's that wall that we're putting back up. Uh, amen, amazing grace no longer touches us like it once did. Uh, I don't shout, amen, uh, when I hear the songs of Zion. Uh, amen, when the preacher's preaching, uh, amen, I don't get behind him and, and bless him and anoint him, God, help him, God, favor him, God. Uh, amen, I just sit there and let the words rush over. Uh, amen, I'm not getting them in my heart. Why? Because there's a wall being built. Uh, and the God that I know says this uh, Amen you can do that if you want to uh, You can choose this day whom you're going to serve uh, Joshua said it But as for me and my house uh, I'm going to make a choice uh, Why? Because I want to serve him uh, He's not an intruder uh, He's not an enforcer uh, He's not going to come in and make you do something uh, But he's rather going to put his arm around you And he's going to say Son, uh, daughter uh, Amen uh, You are mine uh, Amen You're walking contrary to my will uh, I bring you back. Uh, will you choose me this day? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The God that I know, amen, is a God that never fails. A God that never fails. Obedience, the Bible says, is better than sacrifice. We live in a time frame where the church, the modern church era, is more willing to sacrifice than they are to be obedient Sacrifice makes one feel good. Look what I did. Look what I brought. Sacrifice. Oh, well, I, I give the Lord 20 hours of my week. I fill in part-time as a secretary at the church. Oh, I'm over the children's ministry. I'm over the elderly ministry. I'm over the young people's ministry. I'm over this ministry. I, I, you know, I give the Lord. I, I, I sow into his kingdom. I, I, I do this, that, and the other. But when it comes to obedience of the Lord... Are we really being obedient? Or are we just, amen, a, a sacrifice in that time, giving it to the Lord so that we can say, all right, God, I did something for you. Now you need to do something for me. I want to remind you of a story in the Bible, history. Amen. I, I was reading about it this morning. And we talk about that obedience is better than sacrifice because it deals with the king Saul. Amen. But I was reading, I believe it's the, uh, about the 25th, 26th chapter, 27th chapter of Deuteronomy. 
Amen. It might have been the 29th chapter. I can't remember. I was reading through it this morning. Amen. I was reading about the blessing and the curse, and it come right up in that, in that area. And, and it said that, remember Amalek. Amen. How that he destroyed. Amen. When we came through the land, when we were young and we were weak and we were uh, 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 not conditioned for the, the, uh, the trek that we were taking. And it said he came and he destroyed the hindermost uh, and the weak and those that weren't strong. Uh, uh, Amalek uh, 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 would not allow the children of Israel to go through. Uh, amen. And God make a way for them in the sense that get them to where they were going. Uh, and the curse came and he said there's going to come a day. Uh, Israel when I bring you into the land uh, and you get strong and you uh, get all of your enemies subdued behind you uh, and, and the throne is, or the kingdom is set up as far as the kingdom of Israel uh, amen and that's what Saul had done God had established that kingdom in Saul and there come a day and, and, and uh, uh, to Moses he said and I going to remember Amalek uh, and we're going to destroy him uh, and completely wipe him off uh, and the word came Several hundred years later, uh, amen, a thousand years later, uh, uh, to Saul to go uh, up against Amalek and destroy him completely. Uh, amen. Why is this? Uh, because Amalek uh, uh, could have bowed on his face uh, and, and pleaded before, uh, amen, the army of Israel, uh, and the Spirit of God dealing with his heart and say, I'm sorry, forgive me. Uh, I I seek the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Uh, I seek this God, amen, that's brought this army against me. Uh, but he would not. Instead, he chose to fight. Uh, and whenever Saul went against him, uh, amen, God said, I want you to destroy the whole thing. Uh, amen. The God that I know, uh, amen, he'll not fail. Uh, but we don't fail him in this sense. Uh, God, I don't have the strength to do it. Uh, I don't have the ability to do it. Uh, I'll fail if I do it in my own regard. Uh, but God you'll go with me. Uh, if you'll help me, uh, I know you won't fail uh, and I won't fail in you. Saul so, comes back. Sister Barbara with the choicest of the items, the, fam the, 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 uh, the sheep, the oxen, the gold, the silver. And Samuel, the prophet of God, the man of God, says, what is this that I hear? The bleeding of the sheep and the lowering of the cattle. And Saul said, well, I, we got into this thing and we did what God wanted us to do. But this was just, there was no sense in destroying all of this. This would be a blessing to us. In other words, Sister Gail, he wanted to bring God a sacrifice. He wanted to bring God a bound and say, man, you know, God, you provided for me. Now I'm going to give this back to you. But that ain't what God wanted. So the God that I know says you've got to be obedient unto me. It's not your will that I want done. It's his will, my will, his will, thus saith the Lord. Amen. What does God want? Uh, not what we think he ought to do, uh, but what God wants done. Uh, and the modern church, amen, is confusing the will of God uh, with the will, amen, of a hierarchy, uh, a preacher that thinks he knows what God wants. Uh, and then he institutes in his mind uh, over the people, this is what God wants us to do. Uh, he's got to get in a right relationship relationship with God first uh, for he can ever know the mind of God uh, and when he does uh, he'll fall on his face uh, and submit himself to the living God and he'll say not my will uh, but thy will be done uh, and then he'll preach to the people uh, amen you obey God not me you've got an opportunity amen that's been afforded every man woman boy and girl for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Amen. He didn't say that every man, woman, boy, and girl would go to heaven because he gave his son. He said, but God so loved the world that whosoever, amen, would believe on him. You have that opportunity given to you, but you have a choice to make. Amen. You have a choice to choose him, to make a, a Lord, him Lord and Savior of your life, to walk, amen, accordingly to the will of God. Yeah. But then when you get saved, hallelujah, that's just the beginning, yeah. amen, of what's going on here. Amen. Salvation is not the end all be all uh, to my making it to heaven. Uh, amen. amen. To become born again uh, means to accept, amen, uh, the sacrifice that was given on my behalf. Yeah. Uh, what the, sacri the, sa uh, the salvation is, is this, Sister Nancy, uh, I ain't good enough to get to heaven. Uh, I something else, amen, uh, and God said I'll provide, uh, amen, a lamb uh, yeah. I'll make a way, amen uh, for you to come, amen and to enjoy the the, uh, the, Lord, the heaven, amen, for a uh, uh, foundation and eternity of the world, uh, I'll make a way for you hallelujah, he does that through his son Jesus Christ so the salvation experience, getting born again is just the beginning, 
Amen. Now, Sister Nancy, we got to live it. The God that I know, amen, he says it's not over being obedient. Just getting saved is not the end of the story. That's the beginning of the story. There again, the, uh, the modern day teaching and preaching, amen, is all blessing and favor. If you come to the knowledge of Christ, amen, you're going to make heaven. Everything's fine from then on. The problem is, Sister Barbara, is this. Amen. A young man left, amen, this state of Georgia. Amen. It was in 19, I believe it was in 1940, uh, 1940 he left. Uh, he ended up over in Hawaii. Amen. How many of you know what happened a little time after? Yeah. Amen. Joining the, uh, the Air Force and the Navy was not uh, uh, the end of it, but it was just the beginning of it. Amen. In other words, he didn't just, uh, uh, the fight wasn't over because he got into it, but the fight now was really beginning. Amen. Uh, and what happened was is he couldn't stand and face the enemy and says, well, I've joined the Navy. Uh, amen. This thing is over with. The enemy says, no, it ain't over with. Uh, I'm coming to destroy you. Uh, and what happened was, uh, amen, is this young man experienced something. Uh, amen. And many thousands of young men experienced the same thing. Uh, many of them died. Why? Because the war wasn't over just because they entered it. When we get born again, it's not over. Amen. That's, the, that's the opening chapter. John 10.10 10 says, For the thief cometh but to steal, to kill, Amen. and to destroy. Yeah. The thief is the adversary. Amen. The thief is the enemy. Yeah. The thief is your opposition. Right. And his sole intent and purpose is to kill, to steal, and destroy. In other words, his job is to take you out. Amen. So whenever we understand that salvation brings us to the place where we know this. Oh my, i never seen what I see now in the spirit because it's opened up unto me. I couldn't see that when I didn't have the eyes of the spirit to see with. All I was was the natural man. My spirit man was way down, amen. But yet... Whenever Jesus came into my heart, amen, the spirit man revived uh, and strengthened, amen, and he began to take over. And through the spirit, I can see things I never saw before. I recognize there's a fight. So I've got to choose. Who am I going to serve? I've entered into the army of the Lord when I got saved. Amen. Now I've got to go fight for him. I've got to do my part. If I fail, is God going to fail? No. But I don't want to make heaven my home. And he said, I don't have to fail if I'll look to him, if I'll serve him, if I'll honor him, if I'll trust in him. I don't have to fail. If I do it on my own or if I try to step outside of it and do my own thing, have my own church, have my own choir, have my own band, have my own deacons. I, I can form all this stuff. I can paint it what color I want it to. I can put what kind of sign on it I want to. I can pave the parking. I, I can build a gym and a softball field. I, I can have 10,000 coming. Uh, but if I'm not in the will of God, uh, if I'm not preaching to God uh, uh, that I know, amen, uh, through experience, uh, through His Son, Jesus Christ, uh, if I'm not holding true to His Word, uh, all of that is for naught. It's not worth anything. The God that I know, he never fails. Amen. But in order for me to stand on that, I've got to be obedient unto him. Amen. I've got to trust him. I've got to serve him. And I've got to walk according to his word. Amen. Who is it that you know this morning? Who do you know this morning? That never fails. Who do you know this morning that strengthens when you're weak? Who do you know this morning that brings blessing and favor to your house? Who is it that you know this morning that when the storm raises and the skies get dark, and the thunder begins to roll. Amen. And the lightning begins to crack. Yes. Who is it that comes to you and says, I'll never leave you nor Amen. forsake you? Who is it that comes to you and says, I'll stick closer to you than a brother? Amen. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand. 
Fear not, for I'm with you. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen you, and I will help you, and I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. Who is it that you know this morning? That's the God that I know. That's the God that I know. When the poor and the needy seek water, and there is none, and their tongue faileth for thirst, I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. That's the God that I know. Oh, Sister Nancy, that's the God that I know. I'm thirsty. I have no means. I have no way. Helpless as a child against sin. The analogy we used Wednesday night was a child facing the wolf. It looks like a dog. It looks like something it's played with before, but it can't discern the, dan the danger. It can't see the difference in what's coming. And that child, if there's no one there to help it, it's helpless. That wolf will have its way with him. Why? Because that child will have no defense. And not only will it have no defense, but it'll open its arms to it like a big old puppy dog and say, come on. And that wolf has the intent to destroy, and that child has the intent of playing. That's the way we are when it comes to sin. That's a great analogy to see. Sometimes we hold our arms open to it because we can't see what it is. But, oh, it looks good, it sounds good, it feels good, it must be good. But the whole time it's wrapped up in intent and desire to steal, Amen. to kill and destroy. And we can't discern it, we can't see it. If we have no one to help us, we're doomed. Amen. That's the condition of the world. Doomed. But Jesus said, I'll go. The addict, the drunk, the homeless, the poor, do they not have a champion? Do they not have someone who will stand up for them? Do they not have someone who will stand in the gap and make up the hedge for them? Jesus says, I've done it. But he says, I can only go to here. They've got to accept me. And that's where he brings us to. He puts us in that middle line and says, you're the church. Hey, man, I put my spirit in you. <laughs> Come on, I'm closing. Get with me now. Help me. He said, I've placed my spirit in you. And he says, I've set you forth as laborers. He said, turn and look out and see the field. It's white under harvest. He said, oh, but pray because the laborers are few. Hey, man, are we laboring this morning? The God that I know says, go forth uh, and make you disciples in all the land. Uh, amen. To preach this gospel, uh, not to hide it in a cupboard, amen, uh, but to light that candle. Uh, set it out in the middle, amen, so everyone can get light. Uh, amen. Don't hide it under a bushel. Uh, don't hold it back to yourself. Uh, yes, heaven's going to be worth it all, and I want to go, uh, but I don't want to be the only one. Uh, and I don't want no man, woman, boy, or girl to die lost and go to hell. I will open rivers and high places and fountains in the midst of valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. My God is a God of provision. Whoo, hallelujah. He's my God of strength. He's the God that loves me. He's the God that never fails me. And he's the God that provides. I'll plant in the wilderness the cedar, the shatai tree, the myrtle, the oil tree. I will set in the desert the place of death, desolation, discouragement, every adjective you can think of that pulls you away from the will of God. He says, in that place I will set. Amen. Amen. The trees that are strong. Amen. Meaning you're going to go through some deserts. You're going to go through some trials. I'm trying to quit, I promise. You're going to go through some times where you're going to want to give up because the enemy is strong. Amen. But in those places where you are weak, he said, I will plant strength. Amen. What will he plant? The fir tree, Amen. the pine, yes. and the box tree. Strong. Amen. Amen. Strong, hard. 
amen, able to withstand. Yes. Hallelujah. You can grab a hold to the God that never fails amen. and the God that provides. Yes. Amen. El Shaddai. Yes. Hey, hallelujah. Amen. The God. Amen. That never fails, provides, keeps. Amen. The God that is over us, the God that looks over and keeps us. That they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord hath done this and the Holy One of Israel hath created it. That's my God. That's the God that I know. He's done this. No one else, no man, no committee, no form. No other gods, but my God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It says here, Brother Chris, he's talking about Israel. Well, guess who I'm a part of? When I accepted the Lord God of Israel as my God, he grafted me in at the cross. He made a way. And the Bible says that his blood, when it was shed forth, that the veil in the temple, when the first drop came, there was drops that came before the cross. But those wasn't the drops that saved. Come on now. But when he willingly laid down his life and he said, I'll give up myself for you. The first drop that came from his body was enough to save the entire world. It didn't take any more. That one drop was all that needed to be shed. He must die because the sheep's got to die. But it didn't take but one drop. Some can say it took seven. Some can tell you it took 14, a pint, a quart, all. I say it took one drop. That was enough. But to be obedient, they took his life. Well, they, he laid it down. They, they didn't take it from him. He gave it up. I'm sorry. Don't. He gave it up. Those drop, that drop, and the, what came after that is what was shed for the salvation of the world. The drops in the Garden of Gethsemane when he was praying. And the Bible says his sweat. I'm going to preach again. Hallelujah. The story doesn't stop. It just keeps going. Who's the God that you know? The God that I know is a God of love. He's a God of strength when I'm weak. He's a God of peace when I'm in calamity. He's the God of favor when my enemy is against me. He's the God that never fails. When I can't do it, he can't. He's the God that makes a way when there seems to be no way. As she comes to play today, if you would, I want us to stand if you're able. This altar is open. Who is it that you know today? Do you know my God? Do you know my God? I love him. I honor him and I treasure him. He means everything to me. You have to put him first in your life. You cannot be the husband, the wife, the mother, the daughter, the son, the child. You can't be the friend. You can't be the worker <coughs> that God would have you to be if, you're, if he's not first in your life. The God that I know loves us. Even those that are disobedient unto his word. Even those that will blaspheme his name. And those that will discredit what his son has done. Those that will do everything within their power to distort this gospel. And to trash it. Discourage you from living it. But the God that I know loves them. And says, I died for every man, woman, boy, and girl. He said, there's none. There's none that my blood can't cleanse. There's none that my blood can't wash. 
and would draw into the family of God. So you too can know the God that I know. And you can honestly say He is a God of love. He is the God of provision. He is the God of strength. He is the God, amen, that never fails. He is the God that provides. Don't just know Him in name. Don't just know Him because of John 3, 16. You've heard that or seen a bumper sticker. Don't just know that because you've been told that since you was a child. But know it because you came to Him. And you laid your life down. You said, God, forgive me, I'm a sinner. I'm in need of salvation. I've made a wreck of my life. God, I ask you to come into my heart and make a difference in my life. Save me. Wash me. Cleanse me. Place your spirit in my heart. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. Be my Lord, my God. Walk with me. Encourage me. Strengthen me. Keep me. I give myself to you this day. Hallelujah. If you know him that way, then you know the God that I know. But if you don't, this altar is open. Time is filled with swift transitions. Not of earth unmoved can stand. Your hopes on things eternal. Oh, to God's unchanging hand. Oh, to God's unchanging hand. Oh, to God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Oh, to God's unchanging hand. Trust in him who will not leave you whatsoever ears may bring if my earthly friends forsaken still more closely to him cling oh to God's unchanging hand oh to God's unchanging hand build your hopes on things eternal Oh, to God's unchanging hand. Covet not this world's vain riches that so rapidly decay. Seek to gain the heavenly treasures that will never pass away. Oh, to God's unchanging hand. Oh, to God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Oh, to God's unchanging hand. When your journey is completed, if 
to God you have been true fair and bright the home and glory your enraptured soul will view thank you Jesus oh to God's unchanging hand oh to God's unchanging hand be hopes on things eternal oh to god's unchanging hand